Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal-arda wa ja'ala al-zulumati wal-nur. Thumma alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'dilun. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah We praise Him, we worship Him, we seek His assistance, we seek His tawfiq We pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us And we pray to Him to give us the tawfiq to apply it فإنه من يرد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Today is the 10th of Rabi al-Thani of the year 1441 since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into December the 7th of the Gregorian calendar 2017 I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this Majlis, a Majlis Mubarak, and I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make all the brothers and sisters who are physically with us in this masjid or who might be tuning in live to make them Mubarakin, blessed in themselves and in, in their families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this Majlis, make it a Majlis that is surrounded by the angels, showered by His mercy. And may Allah make our ja'iza when we are done here is that it will be said to us, go for you have been forgiven. Allahumma ameen. Um, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in the ayah, uh, <clears throat> um, let me get my notes straight here. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in the ayah, of Surah Al-Ahzab Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Indeed Allah confers his blessings upon the Prophet and his angels also do so O who you believe ask Allah to confer blessing upon him and ask for uh, peace to be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam When this ayah was revealed the Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we know how to make salam upon you. We say, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. But how do, we, how do we make salah and salam upon you? So he alayhi salatu was salam, and this hadith is agreed upon its authenticity. It is related by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim in their sahih. He said, uh, Qulu, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Because notice in the ayah, Allah عز وجل is addressing the believers to send salah upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا, right? صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. So the Sahaba asked, how do we make salah? We are ordered to make salah upon you, يا رسول الله. So how do we do that? So Rasulullah sallallahu taught the Sahaba. He said, "Qulu, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallaita ala Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid. Uh, Allahumma, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama barakta ala ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid." Today, 
this will be the talk of our lecture. It will be about this honorable household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. So today will be our talk will be about this honorable household and this honorable group of Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and alayhim as salatu wa salam. For those who are aware, last Saturday we talked, uh, this, is the second this is the second lecture in the series of three lectures. Last Saturday we talked about Sahaba, their virtues and their rights upon the Ummah. And today, inshallah, we're going to be talking about Ahlu Bayt al Nabi, Al al Bayt, Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who they are, what their virtues are, and what their rights upon the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are. For they have also huquq, they have rights upon the Ummah, like the Sahaba. And we did say, and this is something that we're going to also mention again, that a lot of Ahl al-Bayt during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are also Sahaba. For you remember what the this definition that we gave for a Sahabi. Anybody remembers? Anybody who attended or may have watched afterward? Who is a Sahabi, brothers? That, that's it? So Abu Lahab is a Sahabi then by your definition, uncle. طيب صار رسول الله صلى الله عليه what if he's if he or she is blind they cannot see ibn umm ibn umm maktum he was a blind man he can't see i met in other words met so any person male or female man or woman who met رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم even for a short period of time doesn't have to be a long. So, so obviously some Sahaba had a long companionship. Years. Abu Bakr, long companionship. While in a state of belief. يعني when they met him alayhi salatu wassalam, they were believing in him alayhi salatu wassalam, and they died upon that state. That's very important definition. This excludes a lot of people. It excludes those who met him while they're not believers. Even if they believed afterward, even if they believed, even if they embraced Islam afterward, but not when they met him alayhi salatu wassalam, so they're not, they're not companions, they're not ashab. So they have, they have to have met Rasulullah while in a, in a state of believer. So this excludes all those who did not embrace Islam. Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, Hamalat al-Hatab, the wife of Abu Lahab, etc., etc., right? Uh, all of these who did not believe in, the, in Rasulullah It excludes those who believed in him but never met him, right? We gave the example of al-Najashi, right? The king of Abyssinia. Habasha at the time. He embraced Islam but never met Rasulullah. So he did not get the honor of the companionship. It also excludes the hypocrites. They're not true believers, right? So, and it excludes those who reverted back to kufr, who committed apostasy. So they met Rasulullah and while they were believers, but then they committed apostasy afterward. They're not companions. So they died upon ridda, irtaddu, after, that, after meeting Rasulullah sallallahu So they're not believers. So you see that this definition is actually a very strict definition. It includes everybody who ought to be described as a companion, excludes everybody who is not a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu So that definition is very important and I would like everybody to remember it. Should you, have be, should you be asked about it or should you have be talking about the Sahaba, which like we said, one of their rights, and I don't want to go back, obviously we did have talk about a lot of rights, but one of the important rights about them or for them upon us is to talk about them, to praise them, to actually uh, spread their virtues, uh, you know, in, in a majlis with your family, with your friends, etc. So uh, obviously the, the question or the topic will come up, who is a Sahabi to begin with? We're talking about Sahaba, but who is a Sahabi? So this definition is very important. Any person who met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while in a state of belief, yani while mu'min in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
any person, so it has male or female, because there are sahabiyat, right? And died upon that state. And died upon that state. Is that clear? Okay. So we said, uh, uh, Al al Bayt, Al Bayt and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who were during his time, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, are also Sahaba. You agree with that? It applies to them. So some of the Al al Bayt, they actually have gathered both honors the honor of belonging or being associated with this honorable household, alayhim salatu wassalam, and also being ashab al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or among the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu So they gather both honors and they get both rights of a sahaba and al al bayt. And this will be, like I said, our topic today. Um, and first thing first, like we talked about the sahaba, first thing first, who is al al bayt to begin with? So that we know their virtues and we can talk about their rights. How, we want to define who Al al Bayt, who is from Al al Bayt, and who's not. The scholars have split into three different opinions. Three different opinions of who defining who Al al Bayt is. The first opinion, they said Al al Bayt, and this is a lot of uh, uh, Ahl al Ilm. There are a lot of scholars who are with the opinion that Al al Bayt are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Al-Bayt and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said the evidences to this, one of them is the hadith from Zayd ibn Arqam, narrated by Zayd ibn Arqam, and this hadith is in Sahih al-Imam Muslim. Qala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Udhakkirukum allaha ahla bayti, Udhakkirukum allaha ahla bayti, Udhakkirukum allaha fi ahli bayti. He said it three times. I remind you of my Ahl al-Bayt. I remind you of my Ahl al-Bayt. And I remind you of my Ahl al-Bayt. So Hussein, one of the Sahaba, who was hearing, who was listening to this hadith, he asked the narrator, Zayd, Zayd ibn Arqam. He asked him, Ya Zayd, who are Ahl al-Bayt? So the narrator of the hadith, Zayd ibn Arqam, he said, they are Al Ali. And they are Al Aqil. Both of them, Bani ibn Abi Talib. وَآلُ جَعْفَرْ وَآلُ الْعَبَّاسِ So you see that all of them are relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of them are relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also in another hadith, and this hadith is in Sahih al-Imam Muslim. الفضل ibn العباس ibn عبد المطلب. So this is the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You all know, it's no secret to your honorable knowledge. And by the way, we're going to have be, we're gonna have some slides. So don't worry about the names. We're going to actually tie them in a very beautiful graph. Hopefully that will make everything. It will, we will have a kind of a family tree to, uh, to show visually who Ahl al-Bayt are. But uh, this, will, uh, this will be in a, in a moment, inshallah. But it is uh, no secret to your honorable knowledge that Al-Abbas is the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? His son, Al-Fadl. Al-Fadl ibn Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. And Al-Muttalib ibn Rabi'a ibn Al-Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. Al-Harith is another son of Abd of, uh, uh, Abdul Muttalib. So he is, the, he is the brother of Al-Abbas. One of his grandchildren, Al-Muttalib, Al-Muttalib ibn Rabi'ah ibn Al-Harith ibn Abd Al-Muttalib, both of them are cousins of Rasulullah sallallahu One of them is a grand cousin or like, you know, one, one level down, if you wish. They came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, both of them, and they asked him alayhi salatu was to employ them. They were looking for to, to get a job. They asked him to employ them upon distributing zakah. And you know that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said with respect to his zakah in the ayah of Surah al tawbah He said, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتِ And the sadaqat in this context is the zakah, al wajiba yani the mandatory sadaqah, which is the zakah. He said, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ These are the seven ways that the sadaq or that the zakah can be, can be spent. There are seven different ways that the, that the zakah can be spent. Faridatan min Allah, wallahu alimun hakim. Zakah expenditures are only for the poor and for the needy and for those employed to collect the zakah. And this is what they wanted. They wanted, they said, Ya Rasulullah, our cousin, employ us to distribute on, you know, to be uh, upon distributing these zakah uh, uh, for the needy, for etc. 
and, from, and for bringing hearts together and for freeing captives and for those in debt and for the cause or for the cause of Allah and for the traveler, yani the stranded traveler. An obligation by Allah and Allah is all knowing and wise. So they wanted to get employed and obviously those employees who are employed upon distributing the zakah, they get paid from where? From the zakah itself. So from the zakah, it pays out to those who are employed to distribute the zakah for the different people who are uh, worthy of it. So, so what did Rasulullah say to them? He said, Innaha, يعني zakah. It is zakah. لا تحل. It is not permissible to be taken. لا لمحمد ولا لآل محمد. It is not permissible for Muhammad and Al Muhammad to take from it and eat from it. Why? Because it is zakah. So notice he said to his cousin, Al-Fadl ibn al-Abbas, and his another cousin, Al-Muttalib ibn Rabi'ah ibn al-Harith ibn Abd al-Muttalib, he said, Verily those sadaqat are the impurities of people and they are not permissible for Muhammad, nor for the family of Muhammad. So this is another indication, another evidence and proof that Al-Muhammad are the relatives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his zakah, Allah Azza wa Jal made it impermissible for them. Why? Because they deserve better than that. His zakah, in essence, it is the impurities of the people's money. So everybody who has to, uh, to give out his zakah out of their money, this percentage of his zakah is the impurity in my money. When you take it out, you're taking your, the impurity from your money to purify it. When you give it out, it's not impurity anymore. When you give it to the needy, when you give it to the stranded traveler, it's not, it doesn't continue to be impurity. It becomes halal and pure for those who are, uh, uh, for, who, for those who deserve it as Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala legislated. But when it remains in your money, it is impurity. So Rasulullah, so Allah Azza wa Jal exalted Muhammad and his al, and his al al-bayt for to not take from these impurities of the money of the people. So this is another, like I said, another evidence of uh, that Al and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Tayyib, we're talking about the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But again, who are the relatives? What is the criteria? So we're saying Al al-Bayt, this is the first opinion. Al al-Bayt are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Again, the question is, who are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So the scholar, with this opinion, they said, anybody whose lineage goes or ends up in Hashim, they are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So anybody from Bani Hashim, anybody from Bani Hashim, they are relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the relatives and these are Al al-Bayt, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, and it is no secret to your honorable knowledge that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a grandchild of Hashim Ibn uh, Abd Manaf. Anybody knows on top, of their, on top of their heart what is the full lineage of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam up to Hashim? So he is Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Ibn Abdul Muttalib Ibn Hashim, Ibn Abd Manaf. And you can see this upon this slide. This slide is actually a very beautiful slide and hopefully it will make clear for everybody. You see in here, and I'm gonna just start using, um, make some uh, marks on the screen. Uh, Abd Manaf is a grand, father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abd Manaf had four children, four sons. One of them is Hashim and Abd Shams and Al-Muttalib and Nawfal. So we have Nawfal, we have Abd Shams, we have Al-Muttalib and we have Hashim. Hashim is the grandchild of, is grand, uh, grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why he is known as Al-Hashimi. 
يعني from بني هاشم طيب هاشم he had two children he was blessed with two children one of them is called شيبت الحمد شيبت الحمد is right here شيبت الحمد and another son is called أسد so هاشم had two sons شيبت الحمد and أسد Hashim, he married from a woman from Medina, from Al Medina, from Bani Najjar, from the tribe of Al Khazraj. So that is why the maternal uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are from Medina. طيب. Hashim, he passed away when he was relatively young, and Shaybat al Hamd was a little, a little kid. So he grew up with the family of his mother in Medina, Bani Najjar. When he reached the age of about 10 years old, his uncle, Al-Muttalib, right here, the, the brother of Hashim, the brother of Hashim, he went to Medina and requested Bani Najjar to give him his cousin, Shaybat Al-Hamd, yani the son of Hashim. He said, this is the son of my brother, Hashim, and I would like for him to continue growing with us. So they said, he's, here's your cousin, here's, your, his, here's Hashim's son. When he went back to Mecca with Shaybat al-Hamd, now obviously since he grew up in Medina, a lot of people in Mecca, they forgot about him. So they could not recognize him, they didn't recognize him. When they saw Al-Muttalib coming back to Mecca with this little guy with him, oh, they said, oh, this is Al-Muttalib and this is the servant of Al-Muttalib. So they started calling him Abd Al-Muttalib. They said, he said, this is, not, this is not my servant. This is not Abd. This is my, this is my brother Hashim's son. Remember? Shaybat Al-Hamd. But subhanAllah, they continue to call him, this is Abd Al-Muttalib. Yani, this is Abd Al-Muttalib. This is the servant of Al-Muttalib. Subhanallah, this name continued so much that he was known more as Abdul Muttalib than Shaybat al Hamd. Now, if you ask most of the Muslim, who is Shaybat al Hamd, nobody will recognize this name. He is known, he is recognized, he is better known, as a matter of fact. His real name is Shaybat al Hamd, but he is better known as Abdul Muttalib to the effect that even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was, يعني, he actually even used this name. He said, أنا النبي لا كذب أنا ابن عبد المطلب أنا النبي لا كذب I am the prophet. There's no lie about that. There's no doubt about that. I am the son of Abd al-Muttalib. So he became known as the uh, grandchild of Abd al-Muttalib. So the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abd al-Muttalib who is really Shaybat al-Hamd. Ibn Abd al-Muttalib, but in reality he is, his real name is Shaybat al-Hamd. Ibn Abd al-Muttalib, Ibn Hashim, Ibn Abd Manaf. Any person who comes from Abd al-Muttalib, I'm sorry, from Hashim, so all this that, in, that are under Hashim, these are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are Al al-Bayt. Any person who, his lineage goes to Shaybat al, uh, I'm sorry, to Shaybat al Hamd, to Hashim, I'm sorry, to Hashim. Any person lineage that goes to Hashim, then they are relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they are called from Al al Bayt. So for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Hashimi. طيب. We said that Hashim had two sons, Shaybat al Hamd and Asad. Asad, he had one daughter only, Fatima. Fatima, he had only one son, one daughter, who is called Fatima. And I wonder why it's not showing up on the screen, though. <laughs> Sorry, let me. Okay, we're back in business. طيب. So Fatima, so Asad, 
Asad had only one daughter who is called Fatima, and Fatima was married to Abu Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib. So her cousin, Abu Talib, uh, here, Abu Talib married Fatima, right? So Fatima bint Asad was married to Abu Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is Shaybat al Hamd. And she gave birth to Aqil and Ja'far and Ali. So Fatima is the, is the mother of Ja'far and Ali and Aqil. And this is the first marriage of a Hashimi from a Hashimiyyah. They used not to marry a lot from, from Bani Hashim. And this is the first marriage that produced children. One Hashimi married from a Hashimiyyah. For you notice, Fatima bint Asad bint Hashim. And Abu Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is Shaybat al Hamd ibn Hashim. So both of them are Hashimiyin. And they produced Aqil and Ja'far and Ali. So this is the first uh, branch of Bani Hashim. The other branch is the grandchildren of Abdul Muttalib, who is Shaybat al Hamd. Shaybat al Hamd or Abdul Muttalib was blessed with. It was said e either 11 or 12 of the children. He had a lot of children. And you can see them on the left side of the screen. These are the, chi the children of Abdul Muttalib, who is Shaybat al Hamd. He had, like I said, 11 or 12. To make it easy, we're going to split them into three groups. We're going to split these children into three groups. The first one is the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first children, child is Abdullah, who is the father of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second group is the group of the children of Shaybat al-Hamd who embraced Islam. Because not all of them embraced Islam. So the one who embraced Islam are only two. This is the second group, Al-Abbas and Hamza, who are here. And I'm going to use a different color just so that it makes it easier. Al-Abbas and Hamza. So this is the second. This is the second group. And the first group, we actually, it was going beyond the screen. So I'm going to use a different color for the first one. So Abdullah, we said, is the first child. And this is one group. Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. This is the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we had... The two children of Shaybat al Hamd or Abdul Muttalib who embraced Islam, Al Abbas and Hamza. And the third group are the children who uh, met Rasulullah, yani who were alive during the time of Rasulullah, but did not embrace Islam. And these are Abu Lahab and Abu Talib. Abu Lahab and Abu Talib. So we have. Abu Lahab, and we have Abu Talib. These, both of them, they were alive. Yani they met Rasulullah after he was sent as a messenger, after he became as a messenger. And he started preaching Islam. They met him. They were there. They were still alive after Al-Bi'tha, after Bi'tha al Nabi Wasallam, but they did not embrace Islam. Ham, uh, Abu Lahab and Abu Talib. The fourth group, and I'm sorry, there are fourth, four, four groups. I mentioned three. There are actually four groups. The fourth group are the remaining children who passed away before the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet. Yani because, before Bi'that al Nabi ﷺ. So they did not see Islam. They did not live to see the Da'wat al Islam. And these are the six or the seven, according to the different narrations. And these are Al Harith, and Al Zubair, and Al Muqawwam, Wal Ghaydaq, Wa Hijl, Wa Abdul Ka'ba, and Safar or Dirar. All of them are obviously sons of Abdul Muttalib or Shaybat al Hamd. But these did not live to see the Bi'tha of the Prophet. Yani they passed away before Rasulullah became 40 years old, in other words. They, be, they passed away before that. طيب. Obviously, his father obviously also did not live to see Islam. He passed away when Rasulullah was, uh, before, he, before he was born. Uh, so, in other words, in other words, we can say that the only four 
that live to see Bi'that al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are only four Al Abbas, Hamza, Abu Lahab, and Abu Talib. Two embraced Islam and two did not. Are you following or am I, are you lost already? Type. Let me repeat. Let me repeat, inshallah, to make it a little easier. We said Abdul Muttalib. Type. Abdul Muttalib is right here. Who is Shaybat al Hamd. He had 11 and it is said 12 children. We divided them into four groups. We said the first group is the father of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is Abdullah. The second group, two children. These are the ones who embraced Islam, Hamza and Al-Abbas. The third group are those who lived to see the Bi'tha of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but did not embrace Islam. And these are Abu Lahab and Abu Talib. And the rest, and they are not very known to a lot of Muslim, these are the ones who passed away before he was sent as a prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and we mentioned six or seven of them. These did not live to see the bi'tha of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. So to summarize this, we can say that those who lived long enough to see the bi'tha or to witness the bi'tha of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, yani after he was sent as a messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, are four people, are four of the children of Bani of Abdul Muttalib. Two of them embraced Islam and two did not. Two embraced, two did not. The, the two who embraced Islam are Hamza and Al Abbas. And the ones, the two who did not embrace Islam are Abu Lahab and Abu Talib. Abu Lahab and Abu Talib. طيب. نعم. Abu Jahl, he is not from the sons of Abdul Muttalib. Abu Lahab is. طيب. So these are the two who did not embrace Islam. Abu Talib and Abu Lahab. And the ones, the two who embraced Islam are Hamza and Al-Abbas. طيب. The offsprings of these, the offsprings of these sons of Abu Talib, are relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and these are the ones who are considered from Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ones that have remaining offsprings, who have who continue to have offspr offsprings uh, uh, after their time obviously are Al Abbas and Abu Talib and Abu Lahab and Al Harith. Abu Talib, Al Abbas, Abu Lahab and Al Harith all the remainings do not have offsprings that continued long after them. Yani their offsprings ended. They did not, they did not have continuing offsprings afterward. Al Abbas is the one who has the most offsprings. And Al Abbasiyin, Al Khilaf Al Abbasiyah, are from the offsprings of Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. So Al Abbas had the most offsprings and he had close to 10, or as a matter of fact, he had 10 children. And like I said, from their offsprings is al Khulafa al Abbasiyun. Abu Talib, he had four uh, children. Obviously, Talib, who is the oldest, and he is called after Talib. He, that's why he's called Abu Talib. Uh, so we have Talib in here. This is the, uh, the eldest of the sons of Abu Talib. And Talib, his offsprings ended. He does not have continuing offsprings. The ones who have offsprings are Ali, Ja'far, and Aqil. So these three are continue to have offsprings until our day, until our time. Uh, these are from Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is the mother of Aqil and Ja'far and Ali? We mentioned it a little bit. Ahsant. Fatima bint Asad, bint Hashim, or Ibn Hashim. Ahsant, barakallah We mentioned it a little while ago. طيب, Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab right here, let me use a different color. Abu Lahab right here. Abu Lahab ibn Abdul Muttalib. He had three children, Atba or Utba, wa Utayba, wa Mu'tib. Now obviously their father Abu Lahab did not embrace Islam. But Utba and Utayba and Mu'tib, they continue to have offsprings and some of them embraced Islam. So they have 
of springs that are from the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they are from Al al Bayt. Tayyip. Al Harith, Al Harith, he had six of children and he has remaining offsprings afterward. And these are Umayyah and Abdullah and Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan is different not to be mixed with Abu Sufyan, the father of Muawiyah. This is not Abu Sufyan, the father of, of Muawiyah, uh, Sakhr ibn Harb. Uh, Abu Sufyan, this is uh, uh, Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith ibn Abd al-Muttalib. And you remember that al-Harith is one of the children of Abd al-Muttalib. One of the children of Abd al-Muttalib is al-Harith. He had uh, uh, remaining, he has six of the children and they have remaining offsprings until our time. And some of these children are Umayyah and Abdullah and Abu Sufyan. So from this discussion, and I know it may be a little confusing to some of you if we're not very familiar with all this hierarchy or all this lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But hopefully if you actually review this graph, inshallah, afterward and you listen to this uh, lecture afterward, it will actually make it easier to grasp what the extent of the uh, relatives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Bani Hashim. What the point, the summary of all this discussion is, that the first viewpoint of the scholars is that all the relatives of Rasulullah and by relatives we mean all the, those who have a lineage that end in Hashim. That end in Hashim. And we did talk about who the children of Hashim and their grandchildren, right? And who had continuing offsprings until our time, continuing offsprings. These are the relatives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these are considered as Al Bayt al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the first opinion. The second opinion are with the same thing that the Ahl al-Bayt are the relatives of Rasulullah that are from Bani Hashim, but in addition to that are also the wives of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said the wives are also from Al-Bayt al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said this is because it is actually very clear from the Arabic language. In the Arabic language, you see, you say, Al Bayt Fulan, yani the Al Al Bayt of such and such, that includes his wives. Wife or wives in plural, and hopefully that won't get me into trouble. <laughs> so the wife or the wives of a person are considered from his Al Al Bayt. And we, each of one of us, they have Al Bayt. Yani ana, I, I say, Ahlu Bayti are my wife in singular, and my children, right? These are all my Ahlu Bayti. Um, and also they said, this is also from the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal used Ahl al-Bayt in that context. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in the in Surah Yusuf, when, uh, you remember when Yusuf was uh, left in the well by his uh, uh, siblings, right? And then he ended up in the house of Al-Aziz, Aziz Masr, right? And his wife started to, um, you know, make fitna to, to Yusuf alayhi salam and they, she wanted him to uh, go astray and do al-fahisha wal billah. And in the story when they actually, when he was running away from her and they got to the, to the door and right there was Al-Aziz, right? So what did she say, the wife of Al-Aziz, what did she say? وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ قَمِيصَهُ مِنْ دُبُرٍ وَأَلْفَيَا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَى الْبَابِ And when they both raced to the door, and she tore his shirt from the back, and they found her husband at the door. What did she say? قَالَتْ مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ أَرَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ سُوءًا What is the recompense, يعني what is the punishment? What is the recompense of one who intended evil for your أهل? Yeah, and your wife, and yeah, she's talking about herself. She was talking about herself. قالت ما ما جزاء من أراد بأهلك. Yeah, and your wife. What is the recompense of the one who intended evil for your wife, but that he be imprisoned or a painful punishment? ما 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 جزاء من أراد بأهلك سوءا إلا أن يسجن أو عذاب أليم. So she referred to herself, and she referred by أهلك. So أهل البيت أهل البيت. Uh, of the person or includes the wife. Also, Allah Azza wa Jal, when talking about Musa alayhi salam in the ayah of Surah Al-Qasas, he said, فَلَمَّا قَضَى مُوسَى الْأَجَلَ وَسَارَ بِأَهْلِهِ 
وسار بأهله آنس من جانب الطور نارا قال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعلي آتيكم منها بخبر أو جذوة من النار لعلكم تصطلون And when Moses has completed the term and was traveling with his بأهله يعني with his family with his wife He perceived from the direction of the mount a fire. He said to his family, stay here. Indeed, I have perceived a fire. Perhaps I will bring from, from uh, or I'll bring you from there some information or burning uh, uh, wood from the fire that we may warm ourselves. Also, they said, and these are from the evidences, is what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said to the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرَّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى وَأَقِمْنَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتِينَ الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِعْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْزَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ And this address is to the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا And abide in your houses and do not display yourselves as the display of the former times of ignorance and establish prayer and give zakat and obey Allah and, uh, and his messenger and Allah intends only to remove from you the impurity O people of the household And he, this was an address to the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The last evidence to that is actually a very clear evidence uh, which is also from the different versions of Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember when we started the talk, we did mention that the Sahaba asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, Ya Rasulullah, how do we make Salah and Salam upon you? So he said, say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ali Ibrahim, innaka hamidun majid. But there are other versions of this Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there is a version which is in both Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Imam Muslim, which the wording of this uh, Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes like this. He said, قُولُوا اللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى أَزْوَاجِهِ وَذُرِّيَّتِهِ كَمَا صَلَّيْتَ عَلَى آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى أَزْوَاجِهِ وَذُرِّيَّتِهِ كَمَا بَارَكْتَ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ They said this version explains the other version of the Salah. Notice, the first one says, اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد And this version says, اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته So أزواجه وذريته, his wife and his offsprings, explains آل محمد so this Al Muhammad becomes Azwajihi wa Dhurriyati, his wives and his offsprings. And like I said, this also is an evidence to this uh, opinion that the wives are included in the in the uh, relatives or in the uh, Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, obviously, we say that uh, obviously the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam are from Al al-Bayt in principle by birth. Yani they were born as relative and as such they were born as from Al al-Bayt and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became from Al al-Bayt after the marriage. Yani they weren't born as from Al al-Bayt. We call it Bil Asala in the Arabic language. They weren't from Al al-Bayt in Asala, yani in principle by birth, but rather after the marriage to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married them, they became from Al, uh, Al al-Bayt. So obviously, for example, Aisha bint uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, she wasn't from Al al-Bayt when she was born, until Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married, married her. She is from Bani Taim, yani the tribe of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is from Bani Taim, and Aisha bint Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, she's from Bani Taim. She's not from Bani Hashim, right? And by the way, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never, never married anyone from Bani Hashim. He did not marry a Hashimiyyah at all. And we're going to see this next Saturday, inshallah. Uh, but he never married from Bani Hashim. So the point is that uh, the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became from Al al-Bayt after the marriage to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, the other... Evidence to this also is that some of the scholars, they say that Al al-Muttalib, Al al-Muttalib, they say also they are from Al Bayt al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who are Al al-Muttalib? And let me use a different color. If you notice, 
المطلب is one of the uh, children of عبد نوفل عبد عبد مناف I'm sorry عبد مناف one of the children of عبد مناف is المطلب and المطلب is a brother of Hashim المطلب is a brother of Hashim so they said in addition to Bani Hashim also Bani المطلب are from Al Bayt why did they say that they said this is actually on uh, based on an evidence that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day he called Bani Hashim, yani his relatives. He called Bani Hashim and he distributed money to them. He gave them money. He gave his relatives. Then after he gave them, he called Bani Al-Muttalib and he gave them money likewise. So Jubair ibn Mut'im, Jubair ibn Mut'im, his uncle or his grandfather is Nawfal, right here. His uncle, his grandfather is Nawfal, yani from the offsprings of Nawfal. And Uthman ibn Affan, al-Khalifa al-Rashidi, the third Khalifa Rashidi, and he is from Bani Abd Shams. They came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, Ya Rasulullah, you gave Bani Hashim, we didn't say anything, they are your relatives, your immediate relatives from Bani Hashim and you are Hashimi, we didn't say anything. But then when you gave Bani al-Muttalib, and we are like Bani al-Muttalib to you. Yani we are cousins to you like Bani al-Muttalib, right? Al-Muttalib is the brother of Hashim. And our grandfathers, Nawfal and Abd Shams, are likewise. They are the brothers of Hashim. So why did you give Bani al-Muttalib and you didn't give us? So he said, alayhi salatu wassalam, that... Bani Hashim and Bani Al-Muttalib were like this. They were so close to one another before Islam and after Islam. And it may be no secret to your honorable knowledge if you remember in the early stages of a da'wah when Quraysh, they strike a siege around Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they actually uh, drew them out, drove them out of Mecca into uh, uh, a place, Shi'ab uh, 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 al-Muttalib. And they, uh, they, they placed an embargo on them. They wouldn't talk to them. They wouldn't marry from them. They wouldn't trade with them. They wouldn't provide food or anything. It, it, it lasted for almost three years. And it was a very unjust embargo, right? Or a siege around Rasulullah and Bani Hashim. Uh, his immediate family. So Rasulullah Sallallahu left Mecca. He went out of just to the outside of Mecca. And Bani Hashim obviously went with him to support him. But also Bani Al-Muttalib, they went with him as well. They went, they supported Bani Hashim. But Bani Nawfal and Bani Abd Shams did not do the same thing. So he said, Bani Hashim and Bani Al-Muttalib, they are one family. They are one, one since before Islam and after Islam. And he made his hand like this. He said they were always like that. So they, some of them, they actually uh, uh, de derived from that or they actually said that this is an evidence that Bani al-Muttalib also are from Bani uh, or from Ahl al-Bayt al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, Imam al-Shafi'i is, I don't know if uh, anybody knows this, uh, it's not actually very known, but uh, uh, Imam al-Shafi'i, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, he is from the offsprings of al-Muttalib. That's why he is called Al-Imam Al-Muttalibi. He's from the offsprings of Bani Al-Muttalib. And some of, uh, some of the scholars, they consider him from Ali Al-Bayt. But Wallahu A'lam, what is more closer and what is more evidenced by the, by the proofs is that only Bani Hashim are the relatives of Rasulullah and these are Al-Bayt Al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third opinion, and we're going to... How, how much more time we have before Asr? 20 minutes. Okay, we'll continue for another 10 minutes, inshallah. Yeah, or five minutes. Yeah, so we'll, uh, this is the third opinion is actually uh, kind of very quick, inshallah. The third opinion that the scholars have, have had with respect to who Al al Bayt are, they said all who believed in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam are from his Al al Bayt. Yani they included the whole ummah, the whole, uh, anybody who embraced Islam, Anybody who uh, believed in Rasulullah all the believers are, they said, are from Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu They said, why? They said, this is based on what Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Ghafir with respect to Fir'aun. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, 
النار يعرضون عليها غدوا وعشية. The fire, they are exposed. They, Allah Azza wa is referring to Fir'aun. They are exposed to it morning and evening. ويوم تقوم الساعة, and when the day, the hour appears, أدخلوا آل فرعون. آل فرعون أشد العذاب. Make the people of Fir'aun enter the severest punishment, the most severe punishment. So they said Allah Azza wa Jal called those who followed Fir'aun, Al Fir'aun. So they said based on that, Al Muhammad are all the followers of Muhammad, alayhi salatu was salam. But like I said, and this is one of, of opinion, but to be frank with you, it's not a very strong opinion. Wallahu alam, what is the strongest opinion, al-ra'i al-rajih, and yani al-aqrab, wallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala a'la wa a'lam, what is more closer to the meaning of the of the word al or ahl al-bayt or al al-bayt uh, from the language perspective it is to say that these are the relatives of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from bani hashim as well as the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so to summarize this first first part of the lecture before we take a break for salat al-asr the summary of all of this brothers and sisters although we have three opinions but what we can say, the strongest opinion, and this is the fullest and the closest to the language, the Arabic language, and also supported by the most evidences, to say, who are Al al-Bayt? We say Al al-Bayt are the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam from Bani Hashim and his offsprings in addition to his wives, Ummahat al mu'minin So three things. The relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam limited by Bani Hashim. Yani anybody from the relatives of Rasulullah Sallallahu who lineage, whose lineage ends in Bani ha in Hashim. Hashim ibn Abd Manaf. And the offsprings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yani the grandchildren of Fatima and Ali, because the other daughters of Rasulullah Sallallahu did not have offsprings that continued. They are the offsprings, Yani al-Hasan and al-Husayn, the, the offsprings of uh, Ali and Fatima radiyallahu anhum as well as the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who are Ummahat al-Mu'mineen the mothers of the believers these are al Bayt al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let's inshallah break for Salat al-Asr after Salat al-Asr we're going to we're going to talk about the rights of those al Bayt that we just defined so we define now who al Bayt. now we know when we say Ahl Bayt al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we know who they are alayhim as-salatu wa sallam now we're going to be talking about the two rights. We're going to talk about some rights that are spiritual and some rights that are financial rights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to learn that which is beneficial to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who listen and benefit and comprehend and heed. Innahu wa liyudhalika wal qadiru alayh. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Stay tuned with us. Inshallah we're going to resume after Salat al-Asr.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Apologies about the delay. Uh, we had uh, some technical difficulties, but inshallah, resuming where we uh, uh, left off and picking up from there, inshallah. Um, we've been talking about Ahl al Bayt, Ahl Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And um, uh, the summary of the first part of the discussion is that we said Al Bayt and Nabi are his relatives from Bani Hashim and his offsprings as well as his wives alayhi salatu wasalam. So the wives, the offsprings, and the relatives that all the relatives that meet in Hashim ibn Abd Manaf are from Al Bayt and Nabi Now that we know who are who Ahl al Bayt are, these Ahl al Bayt they have uh, rights upon uh, the Ummah. Um, the rights of the Al al Bayt can be split into two types of rights. There are spiritual rights and there are uh, financial rights for Ahl al Bayt. Starting with the spiritual right, the first one of which is that they have the right upon the Ummah to send Salah upon them. An Nusalli alayhim. This is the first right, the spiritual right of Ahl al-Bayt. Like Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Ummah, taught the Sahaba, taught the Ummah uh, after them, how to send salah upon him alayhi salatu wa sallam. And remember, we started actually, as a matter of fact, with that hadith. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we know how to send, how to make taslim upon you. Assalamu alayka ayyuha nabi. So how do we uh, send salah upon you? And he said alayhi salatu was salam, qulu, say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. So they are included in salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Who are al Muhammad that we just discussed, uh, that we just defined and talked about? Uh, كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك إنك حميد مجيد and that is why one of the poets uh, رحمه الله تعالى he said يا آل بيت رسول الله حبكم فرض من الرحمن في القرآن أنزله يكفيكم فخرا عند الله أنكم مَنْ لَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا صَلَاةَ لَهُ The meaning of which, these are two lines of poetry. Uh, he said, يَا آلَ بَيْتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ O Al Bayt al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Your love, loving you, حبكم, is fard, is a fard from Allah, from Ar-Rahman, في القرآن أنزله, that he revealed in the Qur'an, which is the ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيَّ أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ and in the Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu we saw that included in that is also Salah upon Al Nabi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. So this love to them and sending Salah upon them, in addition to sending Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu is a fard from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala that he revealed in the Quran. Then he said, يَكْفِيكُمُ فَخْرًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنَّكُمُ Enough honor for you. يعني يا آل البيت, آل بيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, that you are Whoever does not send salah upon you, that he has no salah. Meaning, what he's referring to is that you know that in the salah, in every salah, we actually make a salah al Ibrahimiyyah at the end of the salah, right? We say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, this is part of his salah. Some of the scholars, they say that this is a fard in the salah, it is one of the pillars of a salah. So he's saying, according to that opinion, he's saying that enough honor for you that whoever does not send salah upon you, then his salah is not valid. If he misses that, then his salah is not valid. So there is no salah for the person who does not send salah upon you. And obviously, this is a great honor for Rasulullah and for his al baytihi alayhim salatu wassalam. So this is the first spiritual right to send salah upon al al bayt an nusalli alayhim. The second right is to love them, respect them, and to take care of them. Um, so this is also from the spiritual rights, to love them, to respect them, and to take care of them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to his companions, alayhim salatu was, alayhim uh, ridwanullah, in the hadith of Zayd ibn Arqam, which is in Sahih Muslim. 
He said, أنا تارك فيكم ثقالين أولهما كتاب الله فيه الهدى والنور فخذوا بكتاب الله واستمسكوا به I am leaving among you two weighty things ثقالين two weighty things the first one being the book of Allah which is القرآن العظيم in which there is right guidance and light so hold fast to the book of Allah and adhere to it فحث على كتاب الله ورغب فيه so he exhorted us to hold fast to the book of Allah and he uh, encouraged us to follow it. Then, ثم قال وأهل بيتي أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي. He repeated it three times. And then he second the second one, the second of the two weighty things, الثقلين, الثقل الثاني, the second ثقل. The second are the members of my household. I remind you of the members of my household. Yani, I remind you of their rights upon the Ummah, which is like I said, one of them is to uh, se- uh, to respect them and to love them and to uh, re- revere them, uh, And he once said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, who is also from the relatives of uh, the Prophet sallallahu and he is from Al al Bayt, Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, لا يحبك إلا مؤمن ولا يبغضك إلا منافق. None but a believer would love you and none but a hypocrite would hate you. And this is related by Imam al-Nasai and al-Tirmidhi and it is judged as hadith sahih. Also, alayhi salatu wassalam said with respect to al-Hasan and al-Husayn, his grandchildren, he said, Allahumma inni uhibbuhuma fa'ahibbahuma. Oh Allah, I love them, so love them. He is uh, asking Allah azza wa jal to love them because he loved them. They are from Al al-Bayt and they are his grandchildren. All of these tells us that the wajib and the duty upon every believer to uh, who, who follows Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who loves him alayhi salatu wa sallam is to, the wajib is to love his relatives, his family and the member of his family, his household. And this is a deen, like we said about the Sahaba. We love the Sahaba. Likewise, we equally we love the Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we take this as, as a deen. As a matter of fact, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullahu ta'ala, he said, Tajibu mahabbatuhum. It is a wajib. Tajib, yani from al wujub. Tajibu mahabbatuhum. Loving Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to have walaya to them, yani to ally with them and to support them and to uh, respect them and ri'ayat huquqihim and to attend to their rights and to their needs these are wajib upon every believer and this is one of the two weighty things one of the two thaqalan that rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has given the wasiyah with to his ummah alayhi salatu wassalam and al imam al qurtubi he said wujub ihtiram ahli that respecting the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu is a wajib and ibraruhum, yani to be bar to them, yani to be kind to them and to be nice to them and tawqirihim and to respect them and to love them is wajib like wujub al-fara'id yani like the wujub of al-salawat al-khams wujub of siyam in the month of Ramadan etc etc wujub al-zakat al-wajibah likewise it is wajib upon every believer to love them and to respect them and to attend to their needs and give them their rights upon the ummah uh, alayhim salatu wassalam so loving the uh, al al-bayt is not something that is recommended good to do like we said about the sahaba we said no 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 loving the sahaba and likewise loving al al-bayt and respecting them is wajib upon every believer and it is from the signs of al iman in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and in the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam hating them there are some groups who hate them like al nawasib al nawasib they hate al bayt an nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam hating them is a sign of hypocrisy ayah min al nifaq like we said about the sahaba likewise hating the sahaba is nifaq wal iyadhu and it may reach also all the way to al kufr wal iyadhu billah so hubbuhum iman loving them is iman and hating them is hypocrisy wal iyadhu billah so uh, and somebody who hate them he he or she is a, is earning sin like i said it's not just something that is mustahab recommended if you do not do it then you're not there's nothing on you there is no sin no, hating them or not loving them and not attending to their needs and not giving them their rights is a sinful action that the person is sinning and disobeying Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala by doing that. Um, and that is why Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu used to say 
that وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ By the one whose my soul is in his hands. يعني by Allah, in other words. By Allah. لَقَرَابَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The relatives of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ أَنْ أَصِلْ It is more beloved to me to maintain the relationship with Al Bayt and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is be more beloved to me than maintaining my own kinship. Ahabu ilayya an asila min qarabati from my relatives to maintain and to maintain the relationship with my own kinship, to maintain the kinship of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more beloved to me, meaning that his family takes precedence over one's own family. Uh, and this is uh, only only a, uh, only a test to the um, you know to the to the wujub of respecting them and loving them and uh, and giving them precedence over others even over your own family. And Umar ibn al Khattab radiyallahu anhu he once said to Al Abbas he once said to Al Abbas who is Al Abbas uncle, uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we just spoke be, uh, about him a little earlier he is one of the children of. Shaybat al-Hamd, better known as Abdul Muttalib, who actually witnessed Islam and embraced Islam. Remember? Hamza and Al-Abbas. Uh, once Umar ibn al-Khattab, he, sent to, he said to Al-Abbas, Mah ya Al-Abbas, oh ya Abbas, Wallahi la Islamuk, by Allah, your embracing Islam is more beloved to me than my father embracing Islam. Why? Because he said that your embracing of Islam is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa loved so much. So because Rasulullah loved it so much, for because of the love of Rasulullah he loved it so much, even he preferred it over the Islam of his own father, Al-Khattab. Um, so this is why you know, the Sahaba, Radwanullah alayhim, they understood those rights and this uh, love to the Al Bayt, and that's why they actually preferred them over others, over the, even over their own family. Speaking of Umar ibn al-Khattab, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu during his khilafah, when he, when he was Khalifa al-Mu'minin, or Khalifa al-Muslimin. He was the first one to start what is called formally, yani by the government, started formal uh, uh, keeping records, of vital records, you know, birth, death, as we know it today, right? There are now, they keep, they keep track, they keep records, you know, birth certificates, death certificates, etc. right? The government keeps track of that. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he is the one, he is the first one who started this in the, uh, uh, in the Khilafah. Uh, and he started to make this formally recorded by, uh, by the government, yani by the Khilafah. So they said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, who should we start with? And he is al-Khalifa, he is Khalifa. So they said, the people, they said, who should we start with? Typically, who would they start with is this, if this is something new? Who would people, who, who, who would the population start with? president, right, to honor him, he would, they would start by writing his name, the first one. So they said, you are Amir al-Mu'mineen, so we should start with him, with you. He said, no, let's start by Al-Abbas. He is the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he is from the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we start by Al-Abbas. And Al-Abbas was the first time, the first name, I'm sorry, that was recorded in those records. And he ordered that that be the case. Umar Abdul Khalil. He could have said, oh, absolutely, I am Amir al Mu'mineen. I should be the first one. But this is to uh, appreciation of Al al Bayt and respect to Al al Bayt and actually putting them first. Putting them first in front of you and your family. Uh, he could have started with himself and his son, Umar ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, etc., etc. Abu Bakr al Siddiq radiallahu anhu wa arda. Once he was uh, walking with Ali ibn Abi Talib. And they passed by a couple of kids playing. Among them was Al Hassan ibn Ali, the son of Ali, right? And one of the grandchildren of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, Al Hassan was a little kid. As a matter of fact, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away, Al Hassan was only seven years old. This is when he passed away, alayhi salatu wasallam. So this was obviously earlier than that. So he was a little kid playing with other kids. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, along with Ali, they were uh, walking uh, along the road, and they saw them. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he came and took al-Hasan and raised him up, right? And he took him up, and he said, Bi Abi shabihun bin Nabi, laysa shabihan bi Ali. By Allah, he, is, he resembles more Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa than his father. He's saying this out of praise, 
and to make يعني, as a joyful thing uh, to play with him and with his father and Ali is laughing he's, he's hearing this and he's seeing Abu Bakr laugh, you know, playing with his son and he's laughing at what he's saying that he resembles more Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa than his own father Ali ibn Abi Talib as a matter of fact Al-Hasan was the most close from creation wise from the outside he, he was the one who resembled Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the most he looked very similar to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of them were laughing. And this is all to show the love that uh, Sahaba had to the al bayt al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another uh, uh, story that shows the love to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and his al bayt is when after a battle, during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, they brought, obviously he was the Khalifa, so they brought to him the booties of the war. Right, L whatever they earn from the from the war, uh, and there were a lot of you know clothing uh, and garments uh, in, in, in the mix. So he started to give all those who participated in the battle and everybody. He started to give them a garment. He did not give Al Hassan and Al Hussein anything. And then he looked when he distributed everything uh, among the Muslim. Then he looked to them and he said, "I did not find anything that." Uh, that that would be worthy of you. Yani nothing in, the, in in this that is 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 deserving of your honor. And then he ordered two nice garments to be specifically ordered from Yemen for them specifically and to be given to them. Yani something that would be worthy uh, to them. And he رضي الله عن يعني I mean Umar ibn al-Khattab. He actually used to uh, be more generous. He used to be more generous to Al-Hasan and Al-Hussein, and he would give them more than his own son. Abdullah ibn Umar. He would give them more and would be more uh, generous with them than his own son. Radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, Sahab al Jalil, Abu Huraira, once he saw Al Hassan ibn Ali one day. He said, Ya Aba Muhammad, Al Hassan, he used to be, his kunya used to be Abu Muhammad. So he said, Ya Aba Muhammad, I want something from you. He said, What do you want? He said, I want you to expose your belly for me. Surah. You know surah? Uh, which is this little hole in the, in the belly. He said, I want you to expose the surah. He said, what do you want from with my surah? Why would you want me to expose it? He said, yeah, I want you to expose it. So he exposed it. And then he came and kissed it. He said, why did you do that? He said, because I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa kiss your surah. So I wanted to kiss it likewise. Out of? Uh, respect to Al Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when Al Hassan ibn Ali passed away, alayhi salatu wa sallam, uh, Abu Huraira he went in the marketplace and he said, and he used to say to the people, Today a martyr passed away, O Muslim. So uh, uh, shed tears upon him, يعني Al Hassan ibn Ali. So cry on him and shed tear upon him. Uh, so he was shedding tear and he shed tear uh, upon him because he said, Today a Sayyid has passed away. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Al-Hasan was a little kid and he was giving a sermon upon, on, the, on the minbar, he said, In nabni hadha sayyid. Yani the Al-Hasan ibn Ali is a chief. He was referring to his grandchild, uh, Al-Hasan ibn Ali. So he said, Ayyuha al-Muslimun, O Muslim, your sayyid, your chief has passed away. So shed tear upon him. And all, like I said, all of this is uh, showing the respect. And this has been the tradition of all Muslim and all the people of knowledge that they would respect al Bayt and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they would give them precedence over themselves and they would put them first. Uh, all of this to attest to the honor of this great and honorable household, the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also from the interesting stories is one day, one of the Khulafa of al Abbasiyin, Bani al Abbas, and if you remember, I mentioned it earlier that Bani al-Abbas or al-Abbasiyin, the Khulafa al-Abbasiyin, are from the offsprings of al-Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they are the cousins of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of their Khulafa, he, was, he happened to be in Medina um, and passing by the uh, mosque, by the Masjid Nabawi, by Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While there, he stood up in front of the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. He wanted to show the honor of being related to him. Yani he is from the, obviously, uh, uh, from the offsprings of uh, his uncle, Al-Abbas. 
So he wanted to show his honor that he is related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah, Assalamu alayka ya ibn ammi, O oh my cousin. Assalamu alayka, O oh my cousin. And he wanted to show the, the, the kinship to him. What happened, subhanAllah, by the qadr of Allah azza wa jal, it happened that right there at that very moment, another person was there. Who was he? It was Musa ibn Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Fatima. Yani one of the offsprings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself. A grandchild of Ali and Fatima. Bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he overheard al Khalifa saying that, he wanted to show that he is even closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he heard them saying, Assalamu alayka ya ibn ammi, oh my cousin, he said, the, the grandchild of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Assalamu alayka ya abati, oh my father. Because you know that the grandfather is like a father, right? So your grandfather is in the same level or in the same uh, status as your own father. So he said, Assalamu alayka ya abati, meaning, oh my father, yani my grand, my grand grandfather. And so the Khalifa, he looked to him, when he saw him, who he was, he looked to him and he said, Wallahi, this is an honor. Yani this is even a greater honor because he, even, he is even closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam than the Khalifa was himself. So anyway, subhanAllah, so this is the, uh, yani one of the rights of Al al-Bayt uh, upon the Ummah to actually love them and to respect them. And like I said, this is why it has been the tradition of all the uh, scholars and all the righteous people and all the ummah that they would uh, respect them and, and give them precedence over their own selves and their own families and to actually take care of them and to love them and put them in front and first. These are, so this is the second spiritual right and these are the two rights. So we said salah upon them, the first one, and loving them and respecting them and taking care of them. Now we come to the financial rights. Do they have a financial right upon the Ummah? Yes, they do. Uh, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, if you remember, we mentioned a little earlier, or earlier, early in the, in the lecture, we said that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has forbade a zakat al wajiba upon Muhammad and upon his family. Remember? In Allah haramaha ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah Azza wa Jal has forbidden the zakat upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and upon his family, Ahli Bayti. Why? Because we said these are the impurities of the people's money. And uh, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said to his Prophet, he said, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Take, يعني يا محمد, take, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from their wealth, a charity. This is a, a zakat al-wajibah. This is a sadaq al-wajibah, which is a zakat. Take from their wealth a charity by which you purify them. So this taking the zakat out of the money is a purification to the money. If there is money enough that there is a zakat that is wajibah on that money, it remains impure up until you take the zakat out. As long as the zakat is not giving out, the whole money is impure. And that is why it is something that is very serious for somebody not to give a zakat. Your money is being impure until you give a zakat al wajiba that Allah Azza wa Jal mandated upon you. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, take from their wealth a charity by which, yani by that charity that you purify them and cause them increase. And when you give out a zakat, you're not decreasing your money. Allah Azza wa Jal will bless you and that will increase your, your wealth and your money and invoke Allah's blessing upon them. Indeed, your invocations are reassurance for them and Allah is hearing, is all hearing and all knowing. So when you take the money, zakat, out of the money, it purifies it and makes it tahira, and makes it pure. And that is why we said uh, when uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day he said to Hassan ibn Ali, his grandchild, when he took a date from the date that is a sadaqah, People brought sadaqah in terms of dates, and then Al Hassan he was a little, uh, little uh, kid, and obviously he, you know, he, he was at an age that he wouldn't discern matters. So he took, as a child, he took one of those dates and put it in his, in his, in his mouth. So Rasulullah saw him and he said, "Kikh, kikh, you know, take it out. It, 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 these are the uh, impurities of people's wealth. Inna la li Muhammad wa la li Muhammad. Leave it, leave it, throw it away. Do you?" 
Do you not know that we do not eat from a sadaqah? It is the impurities of people wealth. Taib. Rasul Allah Azza wa Jal made it impermissible for Muhammad and his family to take from his zakat. He did not forbade it to deprive them. He did not forbade it to deprive them, but rather to honor them. And to make it up to them, he actually made uh, or, or he for, uh, or he actually legislated for them something else in return for for, for forbidding a sadaqah or a zakah. He made it up for them from another from another perspective, and he gave them from the al khums, the one fifth, right? Uh, Allah tabaraka wa taala. He made for the Prophet sallallahu and the al of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He actually made it up for them from the fifth that you uh, that the that the uh, that the uh, uh, that the nation earned from the battles and from the booties from al bayt and muslimin. Then he gave them the uh, uh, as a as a as a compensation for forbi for forbidding the sadaqat upon them. He made the fifth, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. Um, Salman al-Farisi, one of the great Sahaba, radiyallahu anhu ardah, when he came to Medina, he came because he was told that there is a Nabi in Medina. So he came seeking to see if this is a true haq, this is a true Nabi, uh, to, to see if he would believe in him or not. So when he came to Medina, they said, this is the Nabi, this is the Prophet that you're, you're seeking. So he said, don't worry about it. I know the three signs of a true Nabi. And I will check for myself to see if he is a true Nabi. So he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gave and he put food in front of him alayhi salatu wa sallam. So he said, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, what is this ya Salman? He said, this is sadaqah. This, this food is a sadaqah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called upon his companions and he gave them, he, he, told, he told them, come and eat from the food, but he did not eat from it himself, alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Because it's muharram. He said, this is a sadaqah. So he did not eat from it. So Salman, he saw that and he noticed that and he said, this is the first sign. That's one. Then after that, he again brought food to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he put it in front of him. So he said, what is this, Ya Salman? He said, this is a gift, hadiyah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called upon the Sahaba and he said, come and eat from it and he ate himself from it as well. Because al hadiyah is something allowed to give to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to his family. So he ate from it and he said, Salman radiallahu anhu, he said, okay, this is the second sign. So these are two. One more is, is left. Um, the third sign is what we call Khatam al nubuwa which is a sign that is visually you can see on the shoulder of the Prophet. There is a something in creation that would actually be on the shoulder of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So one day he was walking behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam and he kept, you know, if you want to see something on the back of somebody, so what would you do? You try to actually steal, you know, seeing, right? You want to see if there is a sign or something. And Rasulullah noticed that. And then he turned back to him and he said, what do you want to see, this? He said, yeah, this is, this is what I wanted to see. And, this, and he said, this is the third one. And he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka Rasulullah. And he believed in, the, in, in Rasulullah and embraced Islam. And he was one of the great Sahaba of the Prophet wasallam, Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu. طيب. Um, like I said, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has forbade الصدقة الواجبة or الصدقة and الزكاة الواجبة upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and upon his Al Bayt and upon his family عليهم الصلاة والسلام. But like I said, not to deprive them but rather to honor them so that they don't eat from those impurities of the people's, wife, uh, people's uh, money and wealth. But he made it up to them from what we call al-khums, the one-fifth, which is mentioned in the ayat of Surah Al-Anfal. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ مَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُوسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَلْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا يَوْمَ الْفُرْقَانِ يَوْمَ الْتَقَ الْجَمْعَانِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And know that anything you obtain of war booty, for then indeed for Allah is one-fifth of it, 
and for the messenger and for for his near relatives. The kinship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And for his near relatives and the orphans and the needy and the stranded traveler, if you have believed in Allah and what and, and in that which we sent down to our servant on the day of criterion, the day when the two armies met and Allah are o, o, over over all things is competent. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala made it up for the Prophet and for his Al al Bayt uh, والسلام, by giving them one fifth of the fifth, which is, if you do the math, it would be 4% of the war booties that the Muslim would earn after, after a battle. So the war booties are divided into four, into five fifths, into five fifths, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 
never embraced Islam. So he himself, although he is related to Rasulullah but he's not from Al Bayt because he's not a Muslim, right? And anyone like him, right? Uh, Abu Talib, for example, he's not from Al Bayt, although he is related to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the what the point is that they must be Muslim and they must be upon his uh, Sharia and upon his way, alayhi salatu wasallam. The second condition is that they must prove their lineage. They must prove that they truly are related and they are from the offsprings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One thing, brothers and sisters, is important to understand is that this honorable lineage has been claimed by so many people uh, across history, a long history, has been claimed by a lot of people for obvious reasons, right? Because you get, uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 rights and there are a lot of, you know, benefits that come with it, right? Unlike any other lineage, you know, you don't get any benefit if you claim a lineage to, uh, of such and such, anything else, right? You're not going to get anything out of that. But the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or being part of that honorable household comes with benefits and virtues, right? Some of them is also even financial. A lot of people claim that lineage. A lot of them, they, saw, they claim that they are part of this family tree or they are related to uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib or uh, Al-Abbas, etc., etc., that they are from Al al-Bayt. But obviously, uh, they have to prove that. And alhamdulillah, this lineage has been documented, well documented, as a matter of fact, for that purpose. Yani the scholars and Ahl al-Ilm and Ahl al-Hadith, they've documented this family tree and who gave, who gave birth to what, what their children were and what their ch grandchildren, etc., etc. So this is well documented of who they are. So it's somebody who claims to be from Al al-Bayt and asks for the rights to be given to him, we say, absolutely, that is conceivable that, you, that there are still, and we know that there are still from their offsprings exist until our day, and they will continue to exist among us. But you have to prove it to us, who's your father and who's your grandfather, and et cetera, et cetera. So you have to give us the full lineage to prove that you really belong to that honorable household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most part of that lineage that was claimed along history is the lineage that goes to Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima bint Nabi bint Muhammad bint Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam because obviously that is the the greatest one of all of them right because this is and in Rasulullah sallallahu himself right so obviously all the relatives of him are from Al al Bayt but more specifically and this is the greatest one the greatest branch if you wish the greatest branch and the most honorable branch of Al al Bayt is the one that comes from or of off of Ali ibn Abi Talib, this marriage of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So like I said, there are a lot of people who actually claim that lineage. We say, prove it to us. And if they are Muslim and upon the sunnah of the, prof of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and upon his way alayhi salatu wa salam, then we say, absolutely, you get all the respect and you get all the love and you get all the precedence. We prefer you over ourselves and our own families. And we will give them and we'll respect them and to pay, put them first and in front and above everybody else out of love to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what their rights upon the ummah are. With that, this concludes this uh, lecture upon Ahl al-Bayt and upon their rights upon the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us benefit from what we heard. And may Allah make us subhanahu wa ta'ala among those who love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and love his family and his household and respect them and give them their rights. Inna huwa liyu thalika wal qadiru alayhi. Hadha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Any questions or any comments? طيب, uh, apologies uncle, but he actually raised his hand actually before. Now, so I the I'm giving you uh, this question because we have another session coming tomorrow night. We are working with the Tafasir of Quran and Pak, and one of the Molana sitting here. We I asked him the same question. He gave me some reference, but I didn't get the reference uh, exactly from the Ahadith book no. and any reference which is very authentic. So that's why, like, still is <laughs> in, in my in my mind like. Uh, how we can connect the parents of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ali Bayt. 
Yeah. Because they gave me a reference like uh, Allah gave them a free bird and peace and the angels to say kalama and they become Muslim. You know. Who who became Muslim? The parents of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I I I didn't get it. Like yeah. you know, I have no authentic reference from any book. Like I was yeah. trying to research. Sorry. So somebody who is claiming that he has to provide the references and the evidence to that. Yeah. Um, according to the most. Uh, authentic opinion of the scholars that the father of Rasulullah was not a Muslim was not upon the Sharia of Isa alayhi salam, which is the last Sharia that preceded the Sharia of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani up until the bi'tha of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what would be accepted from people? Mm -hmm. Nasraniya yes Christianity the original Christianity not the modified Christianity obviously Christianity which is the deen of Tawheed which is the deen of Islam, yani the usul al-deen, which is upon al-Islam, which is to uh, worship one God and one, uh, uh, one creator and one true deity, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, the, this is the sharia that would be accepted and this is the deen that would be accepted from mankind up until the bi'tha of the Prophet Sallallahu After that, after the bi'tha of the Prophet Sallallahu the only thing that would be accepted is al-Islam, which is the specific Islam which is the Sharia of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Deen al-Islam that was sent down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, um, if you're able to, br to bring us the evidence, the references, we'd be more than happy to look at, it, at them, inshallah. Now, you had another question? Yeah. Okay, Okay, uh, is there any Sahabiya or Sahabi who saw Allah in their dreams? La, seeing Allah Azza wa Jal is not possible in this life. Seeing Allah Azza wa Jal is not possible in this life. Al Hayat al Dunya. But it is possible, not only possible, it will happen. We know that will happen. It will happen in paradise, fil Jannah. The people of Jannah will see Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and this is the greatest na'im that they will enjoy after entering Jannah. It is even greater than all the na'im in Jannah itself that Allah Azza wa has promised us. There are a lot of things in Jannah that no, uh, no one has ever seen, no one has ever, he ever, ever heard of it, and it did not occur to any mankind at all what's in Jannah. But what is even bigger and greater than all of that is seeing Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this is from our aqidah and Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi al-Hanafi, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his aqidah, in his book of Aqeedah, Aqeedah al tahawiyya he said, وَالرُّؤْيَا يعني seeing Allah Azza wa Jal لِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حق. For the people of Jannah, it is haqq, يعني it is true, we believe that they will see their Lord, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, may Allah make us among them. Seeing Allah Azza wa Jal in this dunya is impermissible, is not, not impermissible, is not possible, I'm sorry, impossible. It is impossible, whether in, uh, in uh, sh shahada or in dreams يعني whether in, in reality or while awake or in, in dream it is not possible to see Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and Allah Azza wa Jal says to Musa when he asked him to, when he asked to see him he said قَالَ لَن تَرَانِي you, you will not be able to see me this is in this dunya um I am not sure if he saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not sure. And the doubt is from me. Uh, I can look into that, inshallah. I'm not sure. Allahu A'lam. But I can double check. I don't know. Now, if he saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then yes. I will check in that, inshallah. Naam. Wa yaak Allah Any other question? Yeah. Uh, Comments? Yeah. 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 Comments? No? Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feekum. Zakum Allahu khairan. Yeah, there's... Sorry, sorry, sorry.